Hey, welcome to another uh, monthly studio report for All is Fair and Dust and Air and Broken Hammer Games. I'm the founder, CEO of the project, the company. I do a lot of things for this, uh, for this company, and uh, this is actually our sixth anniversary show. Woo! And it's actually uh, going to be the Fourth of July. Probably the when this gets uploaded, it should be the Fourth of July when it's posted. <laughs> right now, it's the day before. So uh, we actually have a lot to talk about this month. Um, we had some surprising um, events happen. So let's go ahead and get started and get right into it. Uh, the first uh, major thing that happened is uh, we had a breakthrough in the iOS port. Uh, this was actually part, I mean, I was digging through stuff, pouring through some things that I had looked through before and then I found a link on uh, the Tirano, um it's not the American US site, it's the Japanese one. So you have to run it through a translator, you have to find all the links, and I ran through a link through a blog post where we're talking about, oh, we updated the framework to in like 2020. So I clicked the link, download it, post it to the guy, uh, Chris, he's, uh, working on the, um, he's working on the iOS support for us. And within like a short amount of time, he had it. He has like, hey, it's working. We got a playable. <laughs> so it's like, it solved some of the major issues. Uh, all the primary ones that were really holding us back from getting it even to a playable state, that's now been solved. Um, there is some, some more minor issues. We're still kind of doing through some testing and such right now. Uh, because as all this kind of happened, for the early, toward the mid month, and then it went into the end of the month when we finally have a playable, and we got to build the store page for App Store, and along with doing a whole bunch of testing still. So we still got a little bit of work to do on that. Um, the primary key holdup towards the end of the month was like the Japanese text that goes on screen. Um, we found that the answer to that as well on the Japanese site. Uh, wasn't posted on the English site, even though I'm sure it was at one point posted on English stuff. See, there's there's a big problem with the Tirano devs, and it's like the Japanese team is like at least a year or two ahead of the Western side, and stuff isn't getting posted between the two. And uh, some of the other Tirano devs are kind of having to find stuff out and trying to figure stuff out on the English side because we're just like we, we don't have the sites, we don't have the stuff up there, and the Japan site is there, but. Just kind of have to dig for it. So, anyways, now we have test flight apps up. I actually have a copy of it on my my uh, phone, and as you can see, it is loading. So, iOS people, there it is. Eh, not coming through very clear. <laughs> as what you get for all the lighting and such that I'm using right now. Anyways, there it is. The scenario is on iPhone. Um, now the store page and a lot of those things are going to be getting done probably at the start of this month. Uh, we still have a lot of icons, a lot of little things to make. It's different for each store. Uh, Google, this will be for those that are curious about what the different stores are like. Google is pretty much like they don't care too much what you do. Apple is more like, okay, we kind of care. We're going to check. We're going to review you. We're going to make sure it follows our procedures and such. So it's kind of annoying in some ways, but it's actually good in other ways. So give and take is what it is. Uh, we, are, we are expecting the release on iOS to be probably, um, we can get everything made pretty fast for the store. And if there's no other major bugs for iOS. We should be mid-July. Um, if there's a little bit of a delay on some of the assets for the store and some of the stuff, it might be towards the end of July. I'd like to try and keep it in July, uh, going into August, because we'll be doing some other things in August. But for now, at least July, August time frames, we've got to test, we've got to build. So it's coming. It's coming. for So iOS people, it's here. It's almost here. Uh, Mac OS should be following. Um, I've already talked with Chris about this. Mac OS isn't. He's already had a Mac OS playable at one point so it's not going to be a major issue to kind of get that out it's just we've been so focused on ios because we, the system on apple store 
and doing everything because you have to get it certified. We have to be a certified dev with Apple. We have to post it. We have to do all these little hoops for Apple. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like we might as well get everything done for the iOS first and then throw in the Mac OS. And it's like, there, we're done. So um, that was the biggest announcement for the month. Um, I will be posting some notes from our Android dev uh, regarding getting the Android port up on to the Google Store. I know the Tierno community, I said, I'm going to do a video and such, and it's his machine crashed. He lost a lot of data. He had backed up other stuff, but he didn't have that stuff backed up, so he's kind of had to kind of recompile, refigure out things again. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and post the notes. I'll post what he's what he's like knows how it works, how the thing flows. Hopefully, it's going to help somebody, give somebody ideas. Um, also, consider posting this on our website and doing like a little guides section for for building with Tierno and um, a lot of those aspects there. Uh, so yeah, kind of testing some ideas on that. Um, it, we might roll if we do roll that out. If we do roll that, that's going to be over the course of maybe another few months here. Uh, and we'll be just doing one guy at a time, posting stuff, getting it out there. Uh, mostly we're just going to do this because we can't trust him. We can't trust Tyranno to be coming through on this anymore. I mean, there is what it is right now. Uh, the engine is still the best uh, VN engine. I still believe it's the best VN engine if you are trying to build a big project or build something very qu quickly. It really helps to get stuff together. Um, but anyways. That is that. Uh, yeah, six years. Uh, six years working with Tierno now, plus well, actually more than six years working with Tierno because we started before that. Um, uh, we this is a big celebration as always. This is our big event. Uh, we threw in an extra discount for the sale. There's links for the sale up on the blog page. I'll try to get some on the uh, YouTube page in a little bit too. Um, weekend from a point where we didn't ever conceived. Uh, getting it right on phones. Our focus was on pretty much um, Windows, PC, maybe Mac OS. We weren't thinking too much about phones until it's like, well, we can do it, so let's go ahead and do it. Um, yeah, just for those of you that don't know us, those of you that haven't followed us that are joining me for the first time, yeah, we're, we're just a bunch of Gun and Vickers players. We're just a bunch of guys that really, really love the game, and we had an idea to make a visual novel, and you said, do it! So. We got full rights, full full permission from Muse. Go ahead, do it. So yep, this is what Dustin here is. As always, it's a, it's a special thanks for Muse Games. I mean, couldn't be here without them. We really appreciate it. we appreciate the people in the Guns Vickers community who backed us, supported us, um, who have shown it, and probably the decals especially. I mean, we haven't. It's funny, it's like you have to reach a threshold before you get any money back from the decals, but the amount that the decals have brought in, especially for Muse, it's helping Muse, has been pretty good, and, and um, the decals have sold very well. People like them, people, especially like Gwyn. Gwyn is the number one decal. Everybody loves her above all the others, and um, of course there are those of the guns of the community that, that don't really like us, and that's fine. I mean, you are welcome to bomb us in reviews as much as you want. Um, we are aware of that, and that's just the price you pay for, I mean, we've taken this project from nothing to this point, and there are people that are jealous, and there are people that still kind of hate some of us, especially me, because I kick their butts too much in Late Nine Guns Vigorous, and they're never going to stop hating us, so it's, we're, I'm not even going to try to appease <laughs> you guys, so we're just going to keep on moving forward, you guys can keep on hating us, we don't care. Uh, that said, uh, steps, steps taken in the month of June were also big outside of the iOS port. Um, we were actually very, very happy to announce that the final member of, of William's crew, uh, Powder, actually, she got her main final models done. It was amazing. We, it was a huge breakthrough. Uh, just kind of Georgie plowed away at it and he said I'm gonna get this done this is a major job we got to do and he just went ahead and did it so I'm just gonna go ahead and show off a little bit of powders history and we've done this a couple of the times before in the past with powder powders are she's our most concepted character <laughs> I think in all 
everybody wants to draw her everybody wants to try something new with her so we've had her done quite a bit but now she is finally getting her full reveal I'm just gonna pull this up and elements right now and this is just a collage there's like the original old old powder it's like this is one of our very earliest drawings I believe Khan was the one that draw he was the one that actually drew her on that one and then we had another one here I think that might have been Khan again was trying to get her proportions and other stuff done back then and then there was this another image this is like a more of like a key image of her I'm trying to remember if that was Khan or Georgie I think it was Khan and then as she progressed with time uh, she went from this more of a cuter character as we went and then we went into Georgie did a very awesome little version of her here I actually did the coloring, temp coloring in it, just because I'm going to play around with some of the, the uh, colors and see what looks good on her. And then I shot it some years later over to our Indonesian artist, and he pulled up this. It was more anime style. It was very cute. And then it came back to Georgie, and Georgie decided, I'm just going to do a sketch on her. So he drew her right here. She's looking a little bit more older, a little bit more more weathered of the character and then he when he started to get ready for this final model here he drew like more of a sketch about all the models each and every one for finally here it is her final model in its full glory how she's gone from early stages and progress 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 and then finally here she is so we're at, I'm just extremely happy to see her in a full color everything shading uh, we actually do have some little um, I guess there are those are the little videos that Georgie took of him drawing her and I'll, we're gonna post those probably eventually here one of these months or uh, maybe we'll post it later after you release Raven's Prayer that might be what we'll probably do because it kind of goes into a little bit more detail on how he drew her and the steps and the processes uh, but one of the big different things with the powder and pull this up again is that her model because her character doesn't talk and she's she's a mute character and so we had to figure out well what are we going to do with her poses and such and how are we going to do it and so georgie had the awesome idea where we're just going to do a whole bunch of different poses with her a lot of different arm movements and he's going to we're going to animate her a lot more so she has a total of I believe it's about six models right now so she has more models than anybody else um, that's that we've done for the game she has gone further than all the others and yeah it's looking really good it's looking really awesome we're gonna start loading her into game um, possibly within the next month or two as, uh, that's the other thing that we're doing is we are starting to throw some assets into the engine more besides the story so uh, first up the, on this last month of June we're working on some new UI tweaks and uh, we're we kind of like we're not going to do the same brown sort of UI that we've had before with William and the side and you have the brown is we're going to change the, the color up a little bit at least so it's going to be matching each story better now can that be done with Tyranno because Tyranno is really set to having just one UI for the whole thing and the answer is uh, very likely no um, so that goes into the next part of this, which is going to be one of the big announcements we're going to do for our anniversary, and that is uh, we are going to be switching Raven's Prayer. At least our focus and development is going to be switching it to be in a standalone story. Uh, we were wanting to do DLC. We really would love to do DLC. That's absolutely like what we wanted from the beginning, and we early tier and everybody would say oh yeah you guys can do dlc in turn. And, and it's just there's issues with it that are going to cause us more issues down the line right now at least since if tyranno does a major update makes dlc a lot easier makes things possible then yeah we can go ahead and do it done i mean we can get this dlc going but we're going to officially switch over to raven's prayer all the story arcs are going to be standalone games. So now that you're asking, like, how is that going to work with the saves? How are we going to get our save files from the original 
uh, all Fair and Destiny are transferred over. Now we're going to be building a program for that. Uh, we've already identified the attribute points in the save file, so all we just need to do is have a reader thing that reads that, looks for those attributes, and then goes ahead and copies it on over into the new save file. So that will be the plan going in for Raven's Prayer. At least we're going to have the attributes copied over so that when you start, you'll probably have a selection choice, like do you want to bring over your prior choices, do you want to not, and that will at least launch like a new program that's going to start for that. So uh, that is the plan right now. And uh, we still have to do a bit of testing once we get to that phase, especially in how the save file works. That's not going to have any issues. Uh, we're not expecting any since all we're going to be doing is copying attribute points. So uh, once we get to that, uh, we will keep everybody posted on how it goes. It, um, is there a possibility for us? The other thing that's kind of come up that ties into this is that is there a possibility that we're going to change engines later? Uh, yes, that is a possibility. That is, of course, a possibility we're going to, we're going to probably change engines mostly because um, all the issues with Tyranno and if Tyranno decide or not, not really Tyranno, but if the Western publisher decides we're not going to do Terran anymore, we're just going to drop support, we just give up, we're, we're going to throw in the towel. Even though we don't want them to do that, we are upset with them, but we don't want them to do that. Now, there is some hope um, for Unity. Uh, now, this is another thing that we found when we dug into the Japanese site, we found out that Tyranno's Japan team has been working with Unity and, and bringing something over called Joker Script. Now, Joker Script is like, it's kind of like they're trying to port Tyranno Script over and they're trying to make Tyranno Builder within Unity so that there's a Unity plugin called Tyranno Builder. You could just build your VNs in Unity. Now, that is actually extremely promising. Now, if that happens, we will definitely be porting Dust and Air, everything over to, to Unity because Unity offers us a lot more flexibility on porting platforms on where we can get the game released on. We can actually even release it on the consoles. Uh, that is one of the huge things if we do go there. Um, until then, I mean, anything can happen this year or the next year. We're just going to keep on plugging away on Raven's Prayer. Um, we can only speculate what's going on with uh, new media and Tyranno. We don't know. Uh, they're, they're, they've gone dark. They're not talking. So we'll see. Uh, the one advantage of having a Project 2 is, is we can start doing some of these other engine stuff on Project 2 while we work on Project 1. So that is one thing that Project 2 likely will be RenP or it's going to be Unity or something. We're, I'm gonna, we're going to be looking at Joker Script a little bit more for Project 2. So we'll see on that. That is a possibility. Um, now the release of these all this stuff. This is a standalone. Um, all this content, how is this going to work? Now, there's another reason why we want to do standalone and why we also want to do DLC. Because DLC, we could roll out things a little bit at a time. But now that we can't really do DLC that way, or at least it's not, it's going to be pr problematic. So, because we can't do that, too problematic, we're going to standalone. What we're probably going to be doing, we, I don't really want to do this. I don't want to go back to early access and anything, but for the story arcs for each thing, we probably will. Uh, that's the direction that we're going in right now is going to early access and uh, future story arcs are going to do the same thing and what we'll do is we will and this has been talked about before we will have a low intro price on it uh, for the early access and then as we finish content the price is going to go up and up and up as we add it um, ideally what it is is like we'll, we'll have that and it's also going to advertise the original dust and air cathedral arc and then we'll kind of like work with the two and eventually as, as the prices go we'll, we're going to shift some of the pricing on some other things but I uh, look forward to that so if you are original backer you are going to be getting of course the story arc you're going to be getting Raven's Prayer so no worries on that it is going to but we will get keys to you when that time comes uh, for those that got the initial story so this is the thinking that we have right now is that if you bought the initial story and we're going to get that save file transition working you're going to get bonus scenes so if somebody just buys raven's prayer outright they'll get probably maybe 90 
95% of the story or maybe however much percent they're going to get most of the story everything that matters but they're not they're going to miss the bonus scenes um, now there's another way we could potentially do that which would be maybe lock a certain type of ending so that you have to get the original uh, Dustin Air Cathedral arc to be able to get the bad ending or whatever I, that yeah, I'd rather just do bonus scenes but we'll see as things go uh, of course future story arcs are going to follow that same style as we go um, uh, PC releases will be coming first on that uh, we're not going to force things on the phones super fast just because we've had a lot of issues on the phones and uh, so we're going to have to see on that how we're going to do it we may change something up for the cell phone port uh, just because of all the issues that we've had on that, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll keep you posted on the, how that goes. All that said, I mean, this is this was a big anniversary post. This was a big blog. Uh, a lot of stuff happened during the month of June. A lot of great stuff. Um, uh, we have a lot of assets to still get done. A lot of work to still do in Raven's Prayer. So going into July, we're going to be hammering away just like we have been one after another. Um, it's just been huge getting getting powder done, getting powder there to this point. Now we have the crew, Williams crew. We have Fergus. We have powder. We have Raleigh. The whole crew is there, and that fills literally those three getting done. That fills content for like every single story arc right now. Has at least some character modeling content done because those characters are prominent in every single story arc. So that's huge. Uh, this is this is a huge 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 day huge moment for us to have this the crew done as we move in uh, Raven's prayer still has a still a few characters to kind of tweak to kind of do uh, plus the background the uh, Eddings Cove cityscape we came another advancement on that Ugh, I'm running on and on and on I'm sorry here we did have another little move forward on that with getting the Baron's Mansion, some other little factors done on there, so uh, there's actually a teaser behind me. <laughs> That's actually the, the big Baron's Mansion shot, but I'm going to keep it hidden behind this for now, just uh, so I don't want to tease everything yet. So, Alright, that's it. Long vlog. Thank you for sticking me with me to the end here. Uh, thanks for joining us again. I uh, look forward to the next month. We'll be doing another full report, full blog. Um, hopefully we'll have the iOS port done by then and released. So. And thanks for joining. See you in the skies. Johnny!